पुराने गाने पुराने दोस्त घर की यादें और इलायची चाय उबलते पानी में इलायची चाय की पत्ती और चीनी डालें कुछ देर गैस पे उबलने दें इलायची चाय तभी अच्छी बनेगी जब आप यूज करेंगे रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क जो बना है ताजे दूध से इसका रिच और क्रीमी टेस्ट चाय में जान डाल दे इतना सिंपल घर की याद दिला दी रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क चाय का परफेक्ट मैच रेनबो टॉप कॉन सीजन टू Presented by Nokia, powered by Audi. Hello and welcome to Top Guns. I'm your host Shane Phillips. Today's episode actually has two Top Guns: Avi Bujani and Poonam Bujani. Poonam is the CEO of InnoVentures Education, the education company that manages Dubai International Academy and Raffles International Schools, as well as others. Avi Bujani is the group CEO of Bates Pan Golf, one of the leading media solutions companies in the Middle East. Avi, welcome to Top Guns. It's a pleasure to have you today. Thank you, Shane. Likewise, uh, it's it's great to be on Top Guns. It's uh, you're actually one of the leading creative talents in the Middle East, and I always wonder, you know, as a child, did you have the same creative flair? Were you painting on the walls and drawing on the tables? Well, not really. However, at the age of 15, I realized that uh, there was a creative uh, trait in me when I went through an aptitude test for a design school. So I ended up in a design school, and uh, a few years later, I realized that maybe the aptitude was there, but the motor skills were lacking. So I ended up in a business school. I am Bangalore, which is where I went. People say IIM is a bit of a life-changing experience. Having that top education, that exposure, starts to yeah. really change you. Yeah, life-changing on two grounds. One is the selection process, and the second bit is the campus recruiting. Because so many employers are chasing you that, uh, on an average, you end up with a couple of jobs at least uh, when when you're graduating. So that changes your life. You got a seat at one of the top. Advertising firms. Yeah, that that wasn't my campus job. I got quite a few campus jobs. A totally different story. But I chose to be in advertising, and the advertising job that I chose, I had five options at that stage. Was uh, a company set up by David Ogilvy then called Ogilvy in Mumbai, purely because I read Confessions of an Advertising Man, and I said, you know, there's no better place to start. Okay. But that wasn't enough for you. Then you you end up leaving and starting your own business. Yeah, this few years later, we got married. I moved to New Delhi. And uh, I moved to Ogilvy in New Delhi. From there, I moved to another company, uh, which was uh, which is now FCB in India, called Ulka. Then Ulka and I set up uh, my first startup, and I was I was all of 27. And then I understand your first deal was a bit of a sweet one. Yeah, it was. It was the first client was the lobby for the sugar mills, uh, the sh- sugar barons who wanted to lobby to the government to try and change regulation. When we decided to set up this company called Interface, which is still there, which is owned by your know, Interpublic Group now, uh, the situation was quite interesting. That we signed the deal on the 18th of April, ni- 1985. So I went and told the chairman of the Indian Sugar Mills Association that you know what, this is what we're doing. He said, I don't care. You can move with the business as long as you launch the campaign on the 1st of May. So I had 13 days to build the company. Hmm. And because on the 28th of May was the monsoon session of the Parliament, where the law was meant to be changed, or where the lobbying was meant to happen, hmm. so we had to do that run up. And uh, so I told uh, the, the chairman, I said, "You, but I don't have, I don't have cash yet." So I got my first million rupee check advance from a client. Wow! Which is kind of unheard of that a client is bankrolling you. Unbelievable. So your first deal, first deal was million rupee rupees uh, advance, and in those days, a million rupees is like I would say a million dollars today. Yeah, so so yeah, that's a yeah. bit, so a bit of luck in the formula. Fortune. Do you believe in in luck, or is it hard work, or I, I I think if you stay the course and do the things right, the right things happen to you. That's 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 what I tend to believe. So how do you end up in Dubai from from there? 
Well, uh, Interface then ended up getting our largest piece of business ended up being media and particularly print media. At one stage, we we're doing all the work, including uh, strategizing for covers of a leading magazine in India called the India Today Group. And the general manager of India Today moved to Dubai. And uh, so on the back of one of your clients, so you one of my clients, I got an option. And at that point in time, Poonam was in California on uh, you know, at the other end of uh, Golden Gate, and you know, she wasn't quite keen on coming back to India. So we thought that Dubai would be a pretty good place to come and spend two, three years, and you know. And what year was that? This was 1988. Avi, you're really one of the iconic figures here in the landscape. You've been here for 25 years. And I understand that you were one of the key enablers behind Dubai Shopping Festival. Well, I was uh, fortunate to be one of the people involved at the early stages, uh, assisting uh, execute the vision of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed, but essentially working closely with uh, Their Excellencies Muhammad Ali al Abar and Muhammad Al Gargavi. And that was back in 1995. Interestingly, the idea in some ways was adapted from Singapore, the Great Singapore Sale. But here's a situation where version 2.0, if you may call it, has become so overwhelmingly successful. We had a situation, a role reversal, where three years later, the Singapore authorities came and said, you know, how did you guys do it and can we learn a few lessons? And they didn't know that we had actually <laughs> been there four years ago to try and learn from them. One of the great Dubai success yeah. stories. So th that, that worked quite well. That worked quite well for uh, Dubai. And from the Dubai Shopping Festival came in uh, the Dubai Summer Sale Prizes. In a way, Imar happened in between that, and then the Dubai Internet City happened. And then the real so estate these, and the freehold ownership happened. So these are projects that firm is helping resonate throughout the globe. So Dubai is actually making global waves right. with That's, these. Th that is why back in 1998, when we realized that you know we didn't have, we were a local company called Pan Gulf, we decided to seek a global partner. Then that's why at that stage, uh, Cordiant had Saatchi's, Saatchi and Saatchi, and Bates as two brands, and they demerged. So the Bates interests in the Middle East were managed by Saatchi and Saatchi in those days. So in 1998, when they demerged, they're looking for a new partner. So we acquired the interests of Bates in the Middle East, the offices and clients, and we merged it and we called it Bates Pan Gulf. So that's where uh, in 1999, we had, Bates Pan Gulf had three partners, Cordiant, Abdullah Majid al and me. And that's how we moved. And back in uh, 2004, Cordiant got acquired by WPP, the world's largest marketing uh, services group. So from 2004 onwards, our partners WPP and... Uh, and you've grown it by 150 times the size yeah, of the business yeah, since 2000. Yeah, in terms of valuation, early. yeah. In terms of uh, compounded annual growth, the average over the last decade, we've had 39% compounded year on. So which is... Of meteoric, top line revenue growth. Top line revenue, bottom line exponentially higher. We've been, uh, we've, we've hit a few good spots. The thing I would say about Avi is, when I think of him, three words come to mind. Creative, execution, and connected. He's one of those rare talents who combines the ability to talk strategy and be very creative and yet execute very well. Also, I think he's one of the great uh, networkers. He's, he's very well connected everywhere. In fact, we share that passion in terms of networking and connection. Uh, very friendly, very dopey, very creative. And right from those days, you could see that what switched him on was marketing and advertising. Here we are in the creative nerve center of BPG. Yeah, this is the factory where ideas happen. So, you know, that's, that's where ideas get built and that's where ideas get executed. Have you had some success principles or values that have guided you through the process? Yeah, let me, let me bring the organizational values. As an organization, there's some fundamental values that we believe in, which is can-do collaboration, digital ideas, 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 and that good is not good enough. But at a personal level, there are four simple beliefs that uh, I tend to walk. Uh, the first and foremost is the glass is always half full. You've got to believe that what you have is more important than what you don't have. The second is a belief that what goes around comes around. So always make sure that whether you're a giver or a taker, or whether you're talking up the chain or down the chain, you believe in that. The third is 
make sure you don't get caught in a zero-sum game. And the fourth is very Dubai-centric, and that's what Dubai stands for, which is uh, that the impossible takes a little longer. If you can dream it, you can possibly do it. Although my career was flying high, uh, things weren't working out very well with the children being at home. Uh, so I just quit and from there onwards started my journey towards education. Presented by Nokia, powered by Audi. Around the world, millions of people are switching to Nokia Lumia. For the best smartphone photography in low light, for easy wireless charging and for city lanes to explore the world around them. <laughs> Time to switch. Rainbow Top Gun Season 2 I've learned two distinct lessons from my parents. The first one from my dad being that the most important thing, you know, to succeed in life is to be a people's person. At the end of the day, it's your relations with people, you know, that will carry you forward. And what I've learned from mom, and I think this is the biggest life lesson I've learned, is that there's no shortcut for hard work. So, I mean, there's, there's one route you take, and it's hard work. You have to persevere. There's no going around the bush or anything. Hello, and welcome back to Top Guns. I'm here with Poonam Bojani, CEO of InnoVentures Education. Poonam, welcome to Top Guns. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Likewise. How did your career start? I started uh, by working with uh, Tata Consultancy Services in the software industry, primarily in financial services. So you were doing some very hardcore consulting? Absolutely. Um, one of the world's largest organizations. I have worked with uh, Philips in uh, Belgium, and I have worked with Philips in the Netherlands, and Sweden, and United States. And then finally I came here to Dubai. Right, so how do you make the jump? Well, you're in ABN AMRO, working towards becoming a chief information officer. Yes. How do you make the jump from that into starting a school? Well, actually, by quitting what I was doing in the first place, and the reason for my quitting ABN AMRO was that I had two young children at home who weren't really getting my attention, and although my career was flying high, uh, things weren't working out very well with the children being at home. Uh, so I just quit and from there onwards started my journey towards education. Well, where did it all start? What was the jumping off point? The jumping off point was really when after I had spent uh, about three years with my children at home, I realized that I wanted a lot more from their education than what was being provided to them. I decided that I had to get into education because I wanted education of a different type for them. So you put a proposal More, together? Yes, yes. And that was the time Dubai was really expanding. And uh, we were fortunate that our business case was approved. And uh, we were allocated this location for Dubai International Academy. And uh, that's how then, it all started. And then you go from nothing to 550 yes. students overnight. Yes. Very yes. challenging. Very challenging. But of course, very exciting as well. They spent a lot of time with me in my childhood, and they still do. So, I mean, I don't feel that their success and their progress in the corporate field has hindered their duties as parents. And from my mom, I've learned that you can do anything if you set your mind to it. What's been your most challenging moment in the, in the journey? I think the most challenging moment was the start itself, where, uh, you know, there were two days to go or three days to go 
and with over 500 students and there wasn't a single room that had uh, that was ready to start the school and uh, there was no power there was no air conditioning in there the was building no power. yeah yeah so it physically was, the building hadn't physi been finished physically yet. the building had almost been finished but not quite there and so we couldn't start setting up classrooms or anything of the kind and then god was very kind in the form of uh, making sheikh mohammed pay the building a surprise visit uh, because he had heard of this new school around the block and he just landed up one day in the school and from there onwards uh, within 24 hours everything was working for the school and uh, that's how we started. Given the success of this school you've been given other ones? We believe so that uh, given the success of the first project we were uh, given uh, the other schools as well to run. Which was we, Raffles. Which is the entire Imar education portfolio here in the UAE. You also run eight nurseries, is it? Yes, and in addition, we have an American school called the Collegiate American School. Okay. So we have four full schools and nine nurseries and a daycare center in the Burj Khalifa. Poonam, how do you do it really? You go from zero to 800 staff, that's gonna be a huge challenge from a leadership perspective. Absolutely. But believe in your people and believe in your principles and things take shape. And so you have to empower the people. Absolutely, but empower the people and have your guiding principles. And in my case, the guiding principle is whatever is good for your students is good, is a good thing to do, really. Right. What's the most rewarding thing of the job? Bright eyes, smiling faces, running seat, you know, just seeing the energy in the students and seeing them achieve their goals. What are some of the community projects that you're working on? We have so many community projects going on simultaneously in all our schools. Our students do so much in the area of environment. We have trips going to places like Kenya where they actually help in the construction of schools for, you know, children who don't have schools at all. And they realize how privileged they are, uh, you know, from that. Uh, we have uh, so many other different community projects going on. You know, recently uh, we had the Filipino workers. So, you know, for them we had some environmental project uh, going on with them. Then there are so many other projects. We have projects in athletics. We have sports teams in across all our schools. Poonam, how has education changed over the last few years? Education has changed a lot, certainly since the time I was a student. For one thing, technology has had a huge impact on education. There is so much information available everywhere. And even the way students learn has changed a lot because of that. It's now, it's about how to learn rather than actual content. And what is most important is the attitudes towards learning. That's one. Second thing is, today, education is learner-oriented and learner-directed. So the teacher is really, instead of being the sage on the stage, is really the guide on the side. And learning is learner-driven. And to see that, you have to see what happens in some of our classrooms. That sounds much we more dynamic. Of it. Absolutely. It seems like the whole system is now doing a 180 with uh, IT and what a great thing because I know you have such a strong IT background so you're well positioned for these yes. changes. Yes, absolutely. I we feel quite fortunate that way. By and large, our vision is uh, the same. Uh, whereas Poonam tends to take the straight line, I get distracted and try and look for shortcuts. But finally, we get to the same place because there's unity of vision. If you do things right, right things happen to you. That's, that's what I would say. Yeah. And if you have a dream or if you have a passion, just go for it. Presented by Nokia, powered by Audi. Supported by the intelligent SME. Official radio partner, Suno 1024 and Super 94.7 FM. Around the world, millions of people are switching to Nokia Lumia. For the best smartphone photography in low light. <laughs> for easy wireless charging. And for city lanes to explore the world around them. 
<laughs> Time to switch. एक ही उपाय है एक कप कड़क चाय उबलते पानी में थोड़ा सा जिंजर चाय की पत्ती चीनी कड़क चाय के लिए मैं रिकमेंड करता हूं ताजे दूध से बना रेनबो इवेपरेटेड मिल्क इसका रिच और क्रीमी टेस्ट चाय में जान डालते हैं। जैसे ही बढ़िया रंग आए गैस बंद कर दीजिए रेनबो इवेपरेटेड मिल्क चाय का परफेक्ट मैच Rainbow Top Gun Season 2 It's a beautiful home and a, a beautiful marriage that you have over two uh, decades now that you've been together. It reminds me of a poem by Khalil Gibran when he says uh, that love is not two people staring at each other but staring in the same direction. It's 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 quite relevant because uh Direction, if you define direction as vision, yeah, we've, uh, by and large, our vision is uh, the same. Uh, whereas Poonam tends to take the straight line, I get distracted and try and look for shortcuts. But finally, we get to the same place because there's unity of vision. What do you say, Poonam? It's been so rapid for us, that rapid and relentless, but I think we've just been driven by certain common goals and objectives uh, and perhaps that's why we are still looking in the same direction. So you met in the Indian Institute of Management. That's right, yeah. Two young, ambitious uh, people and where did you meet? One very young, impressionable lass and one not that young <laughs> man. I was senior to her, so I, I still pull rank. So you were, you were, I understand you were playing a bit of a prank on her when you first met. That's right, yeah. She thought I was 34, and you know. And um, so then where did, was your first date? Yeah, the first date, could it be MTR? After, after working through the night across the hostels, walking across a garden called Lal Bagh and yeah. going to uh, you know, a quaint, uh, what, what is now a very famous uh, idli place called MTR. Yeah, but then we used to always Bigly be breakfast. in a group with friends and all, you know, so that's how we really, group it was always like that, yeah. And so where did you propose? How did that happen? He was already working for some time and I had recently started working. And he came home one day with a bag full of chocolates for my brother. And uh, then I that's how he sort of... chocolates, so it came, chocolates came easy. sort of bribed good, his way It's through. a good strategy, sweeten the brother up first. Absolutely. To make sure. <laughs> uh, an over-possessive younger brother, you know. <laughs> yeah, the only way to get him. So you gave him out. the chocolates and yeah. then? And he was sugar and honey, you know. He, okay. he accepted, you know. <laughs> then the rest was easy. And then basically you were moving all over the place. I guess you went from Delhi and you were in yeah. uh, Los Angeles or San Francisco. San Francisco. San Francisco. So was that put stress in the early days with the early newlyweds? No, before San Francisco, she spent a year in Brussels and a year in San Francisco. And from Frisco, she didn't want to come back. So she didn't want and to come back. And this time you Delhi. were in Delhi and she I was, was in, in Delhi and she was in San Francisco. I got an option to come to Dubai and we thought we'd be here for three years. And 23 years later, we're still here. So this was, you decided and you started your family here. You have uh, two beautiful sons. Both boys were born here in Dubai. And will he be following in his mother's footsteps, his father's footsteps, or he'll be breaking new he's ground? He's a good kid, so I think he's going to be following his mother's footsteps, you yeah. Into the education business, is it? Uh, likely, uh, but not certain yet. Right. So what's been the biggest challenge for you as a family that you've kind of, you've gone through, you know, you've, Dubai itself has gone through so many challenges. Uh, balancing professional and personal lives, you know, I would say. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of difficult because when you get very passionate about your respective professions, you, know, uh, you lose track sometimes of what your priorities are. So keeping that uh, going has been a bit of a challenge, but uh, 
है ये आई थिंक टाइम इज आर ग्रेटेस्ट चैलेंज यू नो वी जस्ट डोंट हैव इनफ आवर्स इन द डे एंड डेज इन द वीक सो दिस सो मच टू डू ऑल द टाइम जस्ट नॉट इनफ टाइम राइट दे से एक्सपीरियंस इज दैट थिंग यू गेट राइट आफ्टर यू नीड इट and now that you've you know experienced parent you know parenthood and you've raised two kids when you look back on it are there any things you would have done differently we would love it if our kids were a little older than what they are now that's uh, but you probably not would have done it this at the same way yes absolutely so do you have any advice for the up and coming power couples who are aspiring focus on your passion focus on doing things right the rest of you know, don't focus just on economic factors because if you do things right right things happen to you that's that's what i would say you yeah. and if you have a dream or if you have a passion just go for it that was avi and punam bojani one of dubai's favorite power couples and as they said do what you love do what you're passionate about and chase your dreams that's all for now i'm your host shane phillips saying ma salama So how do you manage that all all of a sudden from never running a school before to having you know a critical mass of students and also quite a few teachers to manage You know you have to keep one thing as your guiding principle and in my case it is whatever is good for the students is really good and that's my guiding principle I think all challenging situations can be overcome if you have a guiding principle for you for yourself